God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to another Wednesday night edition of Rebirth Live. Listen, we're here. I'm Pastor Justin S. Lucas giving God praise with you on tonight. We just want to say thank you for joining us and being with us. Hallelujah. Look, can you say this with me? I know people are just coming in, but I want you to say I'm at the right place at the right time. Listen, I'm going to say it early. I'm ready to preach tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. God has given me this word. Hallelujah. We've been in a series on Wednesday nights talking about uh, migraines on Sunday, and we're in the fourth quarter now at this part of the year. Look, I'm blessed and I'm excited to be here tonight. I'm glad I got the activity of my limbs. I'm glad that I've got uh, a portion of my right mind. Amen. It's still a little crazy. Everybody got a little crazy in them. Amen. But you don't want to know what I'm glad about? I'm glad that you are here with us. I'm glad that you decided to say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and check them out tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get on here, amen, and check them out and see what this thing called rebirth, see what this man called God is all about. And if you're on here tonight, don't leave out the room, but stick with us. Amen. Stick with us. Hallelujah. Look, we always ask that you like and share so that we can reach somebody, amen, on your friends list. Look, for the next 40, 30, 45 minutes, it won't be long. We just want to hijack your cellular device, your TV, whatever it is that you're watching. Because when I say, I look, I was working on this word today, and I said, man, I might have to say that for Sunday. It started getting good to me. But I tell you what, we're going to preach this thing anyhow on tonight. Look, we want to get right into our broadcast, but I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge so many things that have happened, that have taken place in this week. Hallelujah. We were wondering what October would bring. Amen. And surely, surely October has brought some things. On a positive note, amen, we give God praise that on Monday, our very own Elder Scales celebrated a birthday. Amen. We want to tell him happy birthday. I called him Monday and I said, hey, uh, uh, I need you to meet me at CVS so that I could go ahead and get your AAA set up, to get your senior citizens discount, <laughs> get your discount on your medication set up, amen. But we thank God that he celebrated a birthday. We Look, we appreciate Elder Scales here at this church. Look, I'm not Jesus, amen. I'm just trying to be like him. But I was watching a preacher, amen, who said whatever position you in as a pastor, preacher, man of God, he said, but especially as a pastor, if you're trying to lead a people, you always have to have somebody there with you. You have to have a John and a Jesus, somebody that goes and prepares the way. Amen. So we, sw we swap roles and he'll swap with me in a role and I'll go and help him. He'll come and help me. But we're in this thing together and I appreciate Elder Scales. Amen. He's here with me on tonight. We give God praise for his birthday. How old are you again? How old was it? 42. That's what I was remembering. I said the Cartoon Network back in the day on, on the cable box. 42. Amen. Years, uh, years old. And we just thank God for him here at Rebirth. Amen. We got him a little something. Want to be a blessing to him. Amen. In this time. Because so much is happening. We're going to give him his flowers while he's here with us. We thank God for him. Amen. But on, on a sadder or darker note, in a sense, uh, we are, are regretted to inform you of the passing uh, of a dear sister to me, a dear mother to me, dear grandmother to me. We called her Nana. This is Sister Jessica. Amen. And Sister Jan and Brother Jack. Amen. Uh, Sister Jan's mom, Sister Jessica's grandmother, uh, she passed on this week. And let me tell you something. God was there with us right on time. When I say he lined things up, we were able to go in with the family and have communion and have prayer. Hallelujah. And give some words of encouragement and pray over, over Nana. We called her Nana. Amen. Uh, Miss Purdy, we prayed over her. And, and guess what? Within 15 to 20 minutes later, you'll hear about it in my, in my teaching. Within 15 to 20 minutes later, she went on to be with the Lord. Amen. So we thank God, hallelujah, that she had a good finish. Let me just leave this thing alone. We thank God that she had a good finish. And, ah, that she finished good. Look, while you are liking and sharing, we're going to jam a little bit. We want to sing with you guys on tonight. It's an oldie but a goodie. An oldie but a goodie. We want to sing this with you on tonight. Come on, push that like, push that share button one more time. Get somebody in here. Come on, we're going to have a good time tonight. Give me some in the house. I want to feel this thing. Come on. Hallelujah. Y'all know this. It says, hold on, because a change is coming. Hold on, because a change is coming. 
Hallelujah. Sing with me. It says, Yesterday, a man said to me, He said, How can you smile when your world is crumbling down? I said, Here's my secret. Come on. When I want to cry, give me some. I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by and I hold on. Ah, change is coming. Come on, help me. Hold on. Ah, yeah. Everything will be all right. Hold on. Ah, you can make it. Come on and say, hold on. Yeah. Everything will be all right. Some like to wear it. Some like to hide. Some people like to run away from the pain inside. Now that's your business. Do whatever you want to do. But if it don't work out, here's what you ought to do. Just hold on. Come on. Change is coming. Yeah. Hold on. Hey, it says, don't worry about a thing. Hold on. Come on and say it. You can make it. Hold on. Everything will be all right. Hold on. Now, change is coming. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Don't worry about a thing. Hold on. Come on and tell them. You can make it. Hold on. Everything troubles of life yeah come on weigh it down just lift your head up yeah yeah when the love you seek is hard to find don't give up just be strong keep the faith and hold on change is coming yeah hold on everything You can make it. Hold on. Don't worry about a thing. Hold on. Uh, you can make it. Uh, hold on. Everything will be all right. Now, here's a part of the song everybody can participate in. Whether you feel like you can sing or not, the next time the devil come knocking at your door, when troubles arise, when issues come up, I want you to just be encouraged and sing a little part of the song that goes a little something like this. Are you ready? Can't nobody hear you if you sound bad. Come on, say la da, la da. Because a change is coming, yeah. Say, hold on, everything will be all right. 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 Be all right. Encourage yourself. Say, everything is going to be all right. Come on. Encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Come on and sing it tonight. Encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to pat your own self. Come on. Encourage yourself. Come on, sing it with me right here. It says like this. Everything will be all right. 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 If I had some singers with me, we'd rock that thing. We'd rock that thing. If I had some singers with me, hallelujah, I want you to be encouraged on tonight. Guess what? That change is coming. Hallelujah. We need to change. Hallelujah. I used to hear my, uh, my auntie, Aunt Gerald, she sing, a wonderful change has come over me. Oh, 
he changed. Oh my God, how we go from the groove to the to the to the church. My life complete. Come on, Angel. And now I sit. I sit at the master's feet. Oh, to do. Oh my God. What must be done? Come on, Gerald. I'm going to watch and wait. I don't know if I got the words right. Till it come. I won. Come on, lift those hands right there. The for change has come over me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say he changed my life completely. Ah, yes. And now I sit at his feet. I sit at his feet. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of change I need. Oh, my God. That's the kind of change I need. That's the kind of change I need. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need that kind of change. You know, something happens when God begins to change us. Woo. I feel like preaching. I'm getting off topic. I'm getting off subject. Come on. Something happens when God starts to change us. He changed me. I thank God for it. I thank God. Hallelujah. Look, if you cannot tell, I'm excited. I'm full of the word on tonight. Amen. And I want to get right in. Come on, do your part in your offering. Do your part in your giving. We give God praise for you. We don't brush that to the side, but we thank God for you. But let us pray as we get right into the word of God. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that this word, I already know that this word is going to shift. This word is going to move. It's going to break and, and, and move some things. And we give God glory for it. We say thank you for it in advance. We bless you. We give you praise, oh God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that goes forth, let it be a change right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we shout and we pray amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles and you are there with me on tonight, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because we've been talking, amen, about doing this series entitled Welcome to the Fourth Quarter. He's got it up on the screen. Welcome you to the fourth quarter. This has been a trying year. We don't know if 2021 is going to be any better. But when I tell you we have experienced some things in the year 2020, hallelujah, and October has brought Walter Reed Hospital. I ain't going to just leave it right there. October has brought so many changes and craziness and things. Hallelujah. We're moving uh, possibly in a, a few less than a month. We are moving to the election this time next month. We will have the results of the presidency, amen, and an election. So, so we're moving into some trying and travailing times but we've been talking about moving into the fourth quarter hallelujah every fourth quarter in business just a little summary hallelujah uh, companies take evaluation and they determine the value of things and where the company is sitting financially whether they need to make changes we did evaluation on last week amen this week will bring us to inventory hallelujah and if you guys have been uh, writing and keeping notes there about inventory it's going to bring us to inventory keep those notes because we're going to come back we're going to revisit some of these things Rebirth is getting ready to make a change. Oh, my God. It's getting ready to make a change. Hallelujah. That we're talking about inventory on tonight. On tonight. This is the second part. Amen. And on next week, Elder Scales is going to take us back to the black. I'm saying it to you, but I'm reminding him <laughs> as he's sitting here smiling. Hallelujah. That he got to get his Bible study together for next week. Amen. Brack's going to take us back to the black. Amen. He wants to tell you how we need to get back. Back to a sense of normalcy in the church. Hallelujah. That you sitting at home and the devil trying your patience is not the new normal, but hallelujah, we're going to start pushing to get back to a sense of normalcy. Hallelujah. Then the last thing, we're going to make the final push. That's going to be the week after next. Amen. But on tonight, we are talking about inventory. Hallelujah. Look, we used to sing a song when we were kids. And my brother Casey, amen, he would say, uh, Lord, I'm just sitting here looking over my life, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me take inventory. We say, can I take it? We say, yeah. Can I take it? Yeah. We used to sing. We used to sing. He said, because I know you. I know you've been good to me, Lord. Uh, Mississippi Po' Boy, we should sing that song. But in the song, we were singing it. We sounded good as little kids with hats on. Oh, but when I got older, I began to really realize what the man was singing, uh, Harvey Watkins of the Canton Spirituals, what he was singing 
when he said, let me take inventory. Inventory, listen to this tonight, is a complete list of merchandise or stock on hand, a work in progress, raw materials, finished goods on hand that are made each year. That's the definition. Inventory to a company is what do we have on the shelf. Inventory to a company is how many nuts and bolts. Look, my buddy used to work at the city. Hallelujah, I think it's going to be a job opening. Uh, my buddy, when he used to work at the city, hey amen, uh, they would have to do yearly inventory. And when I tell you, each department would have to go in the warehouse and count how many of each thing that they had and report it into a system. I'm talking about nuts and bolts, saints. Amen. You had to count how many of this you had, how many of that you had. What? Oh, my God, I just heard you, Lord. I don't have this wrote down. But I heard the Lord just now tell me, when you take inventory, it prepares you for the next year. Y'all talk to me in here. When you take inventory, it gets you ready, hallelujah, for what God is about to do next. Y'all come on. When you take inventory, it lets you know where you are, hallelujah, and prepares you for where you need to go. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I got to take inventory. I got to take inventory. Hallelujah. Elder Scales, now I know this is going to cause uh, uh, some, some, some angle issues, and this is going to cause a problem, but you're going to have to let unplug that, that camera. You're going to have to let it up. Come on. You're going to have to let it up with me. Hallelujah. Because I feel this thing. I feel, I, feel like, I feel like preaching this thing tonight. Amen. Come on. Come on. Uh, you're going to have to let that up. And we're going to have to rearrange in the middle. I know this ain't professional. I know it don't look right and it don't look good. You can unplug it. Amen. But make sure they can't, you know, we good right here, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I feel like preaching this thing tonight. Uh, amen. I want to show you and talk to you tonight about inventory. It says what you have stock on hand. God said when you take inventory and see where you are, amen, that guess what? It prepares you for the next year. It prepares you for what's to come. It prepares you and lets you know what you are without. It lets you know what you do and do not have. You got me good up here? Amen. It lets you know what you do and do not have. Somebody type tonight. It's time to take inventory. It's time to take inventory. Hallelujah. That's the definition. It's a complete list of merchandise or stock on hand, uh, work in progress, raw materials, finished goods on hand that is made each year. Somebody say, I got to take Take inventory. I got to take inventory. Let's break that definition down. Amen. A complete listing of merchandise or stock on hand. Somebody say stock on hand. My God. Stock on hand. I had to stand up. I felt like I was going to break that chair. Amen. Stock on hand. Come on, right? Type that in there. Say stock on hand. Uh, I want you to ask yourself real, real quick as you're typing, uh, what do I have on my hands? Oh my God. I said, what do I have? On, I feel the Lord on this thing tonight. What do I have on my hands? Uh, what am I telling you? Some of us are in situations. Uh, some of us got issues and problems, uh, got 99 problems. Come on, saints. Uh, and you have been in some things this year that you need to to really check what you got on your hands. This is a year that people have already been washing their hands but washing their hands became a thing because you did not know what it was that you had on your hands. Some of you have been dealing with children and guess what since you had to start teaching you got some problems on your hands. Some of you didn't have to aim there lay off of work and go back to work. Guess what? You got some problems on your hands. You've been locked up in the house on court quarantine. You didn't gain weight. Now you got some problems on your hands. I want you to ask yourself tonight, what do I have on my hands? What is it that I've been in contact with? What is it that I'm going through that I'm dealing with that I've got on my hands? I want you to turn it with me real quick to Exodus the 14th chapter. Mm, I'm going to show you something in the word of God. I'm going to show you something where there was an issue, yeah, where there was a problem, amen, that Moses and the children of Israel had a problem on their hands, even after God had done all that he had done. 
Uh, even after God had delivered them and brought them out of bondage uh, after God had rescued them and delivered them from 400 odd years of slavery the Bible says in Exodus 14 and 1 and the Lord spoke unto Moses uh, and he told him speak to the children of Israel uh -huh, that they turn and encamp uh, hallelujah between the sea and Migdal against amen a place there hallelujah before it shall be encamped by the sea for Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel they are entangled in the land the wilderness have shut them in God literally led them to a trap God literally told them to go to a place where it looks grim and he told them to go to a place where it looks bad oh but can I share with you tonight oh the place that God has carried you to I said the place that God has brought you to guess what it's doing it's only setting you up uh, so that God can show his glory in your life. Uh, it's only setting things up uh, so that God can make a way in the wilderness. Uh, it's only setting things up uh, so that God can display his power in your life. I'm preaching to somebody tonight, uh, amen, that's got hell all around you. I'm preaching to somebody tonight uh, that's got issues on top of issues. Uh, if you trust God and you believe God, God said, I carried you there. I brought you there so that I could show up and show out in your life. If you believe it, give God praise right there in your house. Hey, ah, he took them there. And the Bible says in verse number seven, uh, he took 600 chariots, uh, all of the chariots of Egypt, uh, and all of the captains, and every, he took everybody and went after them. Uh, and the Bible, you already know the story where I'm going. Uh, the Pharaoh and the Egyptians pursued them. Uh, they came to them, and Pharaoh draw nigh unto the children of Israel. Listen to what the Bible says right here. Uh, the verse number 12, it says, Is it not the word uh, that all of thee in Egypt saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? Uh, the people start murmuring against Moses. You should have just left us there and die. You should have left us there. We had food to eat. We had graves to be in the ground. Moses tells them in verse number 13, for ye not they may stand still. Mm, ah. He told them stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, I believe we're getting back to the migraine series. I believe we're getting into jumping over to the migraine series. Because one of the things Elder Scales told me is that you got to be still. He told them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand still. I don't know who it's for. And see the salvation of the Lord. He's going to show it to you this day. For the Egyptians ye see this day. Come on, saints. You will no longer see them evermore. I don't know who it's for. I don't know who's watching that ain't never watched before. But I got news for you that God is going to deliver you in this fourth quarter. God is going to make a way in the wilderness in this fourth quarter. If you believe it, I want you to get a heart, get a light, get something on that screen. Let's go to verse number 14. Look, I went through a season in my life where if it had not been for this scripture, if it had not been for Exodus 14 and 14, the Bible declared that the Lord shall fight for you if ye shall just hold your peace. You ain't got to say a mumbling word. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to fight back, but just let God fight your battle. Just let God do the work. Let God do the procedure. Let God handle your battle. If you would just hold your peace. Hallelujah. Verse number 15 says, the Lord said unto Moses, why are you crying unto me? Uh, why are you crying out to me Moses uh, listen to this speak unto the children of Israel and tell them get moving uh, speak to the children of Israel and tell them let's go forward uh, I want you to look at the Bible in verse number 16 it said but what do you have uh, in your hand uh, why are you crying out to me uh, when you got something in your hands uh, he said lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go across on dry ground. Listen to this. Through the midst of the sea. I want to ask you tonight what I asked you before. What do you have on your hands? They had the Pharaoh behind them. They had the army behind them. They had a problem on their hands.
hands. Well, if you got problems on your hands, you need to look down and see what you got in your hands. You need to take inventory. Oh my God. You need to take inventory and say, if I got 99 problems, God's got 110 solutions. If I've got 99 problems, my faith ain't one. Y'all come on. I got issues on top of issues, but if I got problems on hand, then that means I got to use what I got in my hands. You ain't seen me walk around with no staff. You ain't seen me walk around with no stick. Oh, but I got something on the inside. I got something down on the inside of me that when I got problems on my hands, I can stretch forth the power in my hands. I can stretch forth the power in my hands. I've got something, amen, that the devil don't want to deal with. He might try to mess with me, but he can't stand up against God. That's why I got to get out the way and let God have his way. I said, when you have problems uh, down on your hands, uh, you got to use what's in your hands. You already know the story. They went across on dry land. Uh, I can't stay there all night. I better let that thing alone. I, I can't stay there. I said, when you got problems on hand, hey, you better use what you got uh, in your hands. Uh, the next part of the definition uh, is a work in progress. Stock on hand, uh, a work in progress. Uh, let me slow this thing down right here. Everybody always says please be patient with me you just refinished the sentence please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet I'm a work in progress yeah 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 everybody always says that Lord don't, don't judge me I'm a work in progress but I want you to consider tonight that you are on a diet everybody can relate to food food is one of the most common things we can agree on you want to lose weight like everybody does but you refuse to stop overeating now, come on. You want to lose pounds, uh, but you refuse to stop overeating and overindulging at Golden Corral. Come on. Hallelujah. You are hindering your progress. Why am I saying that? If you want to lose weight, but you keep on overeating, come on, saints. You keep on over honey bunning. You keep on over Pringles and you keep on just overdoing it and overeating. You are hindering your progress. Come on, saints. Why am I telling you that? Because there are people that need to stop using that I'm a work in progress as a crutch. You need to stop using that as an excuse. If you ain't really trying, you cannot say that if you ain't bit more trying. You cannot use that line if you ain't bit more trying. Hallelujah. We all got stuff we got to work on. Let's be honest. Come on. Let's be real. But you, if you ain't trying to live right, don't be saying, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm a work in progress. If you ain't trying, don't use that line. If you ain't trying to get it together, don't use that line. If you ain't trying to put the stuff down, don't use that line. I'm here to tell you tonight that we all got stuff we need to work on. That we all got issues that we're bearing with. Because I read in Philippians 3. I want you to go there in your Bible. Philippians 3 and verse number 12 says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things. I told you we all got things that we're working on. It says, I, I don't mean to say that I've achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You didn't agree with the last statement I made about them honey buns? I'm going to prove it to you in the word. But I press on to possess that perfection, which is in Christ, for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Y'all talk to me. I press on, hallelujah, to possess that perfection. I got to press through it. I got to keep on going. It may be hard. It may get difficult but I got to press through it. Verse number 13 says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it yet. Mm, yeah, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the what lies ahead. What am I telling you? You got to begin to let go of some stuff. You got to begin to get rid of some stuff. You got to begin to try, amen, and let Jesus work it out in your life. You cannot say, 
I'm a work in progress. And you ain't trying to put that cigarette down. You can't say I'm a work in progress. And you ain't trying to stop watching that craziness. You got to try Jesus. I dare you to try. Verse number 14 says, I press to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. I want you to say, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Amen. I'm trying, I'm trying. Let me get to the next part. Mm. It says raw materials. I said raw materials, raw materials. We're here and we we, we find ourselves in there, uh, back to food again. As I talk to you, back to food again, back to food again. Uh, wifey, listen to this has been making uh, 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 the bomb pound, pound cakes. She been making some pound cakes. It just look like I ain't getting none. I ain't, uh, she been making pound cakes, right? Uh, she been getting a recipe here together and tweaking them. I said she been making them, not buying them, not buying them, amen. But she been making them from scratch. And let me tell you, they getting better. And they getting better, baby. I know you watching, amen. They getting better and better, amen. They are the bomb. They good. But she said, I'm going to make a pound cake. Oh. I said, all right. She said, I got to get some eggs. I got to get some, some sugar, some flour, some butter, some vanilla. I got a few salt. I got to get a few things. I said, all right, I'm, I'm waiting on the pound cake. Uh, let me say these things real quick. Eggs, sugar, flour, butter, vanilla, salt. Uh, singer, prayer warrior, dancer, teacher, missionary, deacon, uh, pew member, uh, janitorial sound system, uh, whatever it is. Listen, what would it be like if she told me she was making a cake for me? I said for me. <laughs> what would it look like if she said I'm making you a cake, a pound cake? And I got all excited. I got all stimulated. I got all just ready. I can, my mouth can just taste the pound cake. I can't wait. I, can, I just can't wait. But I ain't smelling nothing out the kitchen. Huh? Oh, she gonna make a pound cake. She didn't went to the store. She didn't got all the ingredients, huh? and she got that. She got me all excited. And guess what? And I go in the kitchen, and she said, "I made you a pound cake." And I look in the kitchen and don't smell nothing. And she got all the ingredients just poured in a bowl. Uh -huh. She got all the stuff just dumped in a bowl. Uh -huh. And she said, "Here's your pound cake." I would look at her like she crazy and say, what you mean here's my pound cake? Here's all the stuff that it takes to make a pound cake. Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying. Uh, you sitting at the house saying, I can sing. I know to pray down. I can pray down the Holy Ghost. But guess what? You ain't doing nothing but sit in a bowl. What am I getting at? You can sing. You can preach. You can pray. You can teach. You know how to run the AV equipment. You know how to run everything. But you won't come to church and be a part of what? God what good are the ingredients if they will not get in the bowl and be mixed and crushed together and get in the oven and go through the process what good is having a gift y'all better talk back to me if you're not willing to come in and get with somebody else and let your part and their part come together to produce something great you need to get in the bowl oh I'm changing the narrative I'm changing the way we think about church again it's time to get back in the bowl. Huh? What am I telling you? It's time to get back in church. It's time to get back in the house. It's, oh my God. I said, it's time to get back. Yeah. And it does no good outside of the bowl. It does no good if we all don't go through the process together. You may have raw talent. You may have raw anointing. But you need to come on and let God use you. And let the church be blessed by your ministry. Let the church be uplifted by your gift. Together we can go from being raw goods to being a finished good. We can go from being raw goods to becoming a finished good. Somebody say finish good. Mm. <laughs> say it again. Say finish good. <sighs> Come on, say finish good. <laughs> I know you say, well, God ain't gonna never finish until the day he called my name. God ain't gonna never be finished with me until the day he calls me to come on home. That's true and that's right. But when we're down here on this earth, we all got raw talent, raw ability, but we need to come together, learn how to train and work with each other that we can become a finished good. I said finished good. Let me say it like this. Finished goods and finished good. Mm, my God. I said finished goods and finished good. I don't know about you, but especially after this year, in my life, I want to finish good. 
my God. Elder Scales, you want to finish good. You want to fin I want to finish good. I'm not talking about the day at work. I'm not talking about amen, uh, uh, in your personal relationship. I, I, I'm talking about I want to finish good. What am I saying, preacher? When I look back over my life, Jesus and I begin to think things over when it's all said and done at the end of the day when it's all said and done at the end of the road when they sing in voice to men although we've come to the end when I get to the end of my ooh, when I get to the end of my road I don't know about you, but I just want to be able to finish good. Hallelujah. I told you earlier, hallelujah, about Sister Nana passing. When we got there to the place where she was resting, her daughter was there. Her granddaughter was there. Jessica Jan was there. Her son was there. Uh, Billy was there. And we sat there and we began to talk about the, the old times. They began to tell me stories, hallelujah, about the good days and the bad days. But they said never once did she complain about what she was going through when she had an accident in life she had a wreck and she I think uh, had the car flipped upside down she never complained Jan said that she told her uh, when they found her and pulled up on the scene car upside down she was still strapped in with a seat belt she said uh, I got some groceries in the trunk that's what she told never complain uh, we begin to talk about the children guess what the nurse comes in and says uh, ma'am uh, I believe there's another son here hallelujah Bobby comes in the room I said Jessica they won't let before of us in here can you pinch it for me and let him come in so she can have communion with her children he gets in the room and God spoke to me and said what better way to go I said Lord what you mean she said surrounded by her children surrounded by the ones that she birthed. She lived a life that was holy and acceptable in God's sight. She walked with God and said she didn't want to do nothing in her life that would mess up her testimony. She didn't want to do nothing in her life that would compromise her relationship with God. She literally lived beside her church. She can look out a bedroom window and see the church. She can look out a bedroom window and see the people of God. She walked with God. She talk with God. God said, what better way to go? I said, Lord, what you mean? Look at our children are blessed and successful. Look at our children have ups and downs, but they're all healthy and living. Come on. Look at what God Hallelujah. Look at how God has blessed him. Beautiful children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. What better way to go? I said, God, what are you telling me? He said, you fighting for this? You pushing for that? But at the end of your journey, make sure you can finish well. I said, God, at the end of your life, make sure that when you didn't made your money, make sure that when you didn't preach to people and, and built other churches, make sure you can finish well. I don't know about you, but but I just want to finish good. I want to come to the end of it and finish good. I want to come to the end of my journey and finish good. Do you not know that we had prayer with her? Do you not know that we took communion with her? Do you not know that we had prayer again and said, God, receive her in. Lord, let the works and the life that she live be enough to come and see you. Lord, when you receive her into your arms, Lord, and she let her receive you into her arms do you not know that within 20 minutes she seemed as if she was waiting for her children to get there waiting for the man of God to pray over her waiting for her communion one more time do you not know that in 20 minutes she took her last breath and she went on to be with God I don't know about you but I just want to finish well I want to finish good. I don't know about you, but that's a good finish. Hallelujah. Elder Scales, that's the way to go. That's just the way to go. I want to finish well. I want to finish well. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I said, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know who this is for. Hallelujah. But I want you to take inventory on tonight. I said, I need you to take inventory on tonight. I said, I need you to take inventory on tonight. If you're here tonight, Hallelujah, I want you to finish good. Yeah. It's all good to chase money. It's all good, as the young folks say, to go after the bag. <laughs> Hallelujah, but when they put you in that body bag, <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to be able to say, I finished good. <laughs> I finished good. Into your hands, Father. 
Hallelujah. I commit my spirit. That's what it matters the most. You need to take inventory over your life. If you find anything there that should not be, you need to say like the old song says, Lord, take it out and strengthen me. If you find anything there that's not right, Lord, take it out. I, I want to be holy again. I need to be cleaned again. God, I got some stuff on board that I know I shouldn't be doing. Strengthen me. God, I got some issues that I know I shouldn't be walking in. Lord, make me whole again. For I heard David after he took inventory, he had messed up, but he said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not from your presence, oh God. Lord, but let me be here a little while longer. You need to take inventory. Ah, I said you need to take inventory on tonight. Take inventory on tonight. Come on, this is not just by chance, but I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You need to take inventory. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to kick over the bucket of milk. You've already heard the word of God. Work, find out what's working for you. Find out what's not working for you. Find out what's strengthening you. Find out what's weakening you. And say, Lord, help me to get rid of it. Help me to bear it, God. Strengthen me and make me better. We love you. We give God praise for you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.